Hey y'all, today we're going to use those trig ratios that we talked about last lesson and we're going to find uh, missing sides in right triangles. First a little refresher on Pythagorean theorem because this is an option for finding a missing side in a right triangle if, if that's what you're being asked to do. Um, so the, the most important thing to highlight um, that you should remember about the Pythagorean theorem is that the hypotenuse, the longest side, is always going to be C in our formula. So just like we were talking about obtuse triangles, acute triangles, and uh, a little bit about right triangles earlier, and we used Pythagorean theorem, the longest side, or the side that's across from the right angle, is C. So the hypotenuse is always C. So if we encounter a right triangle problem, and the thing that we're looking for is uh, one of the side lengths, and we know two of the three side lengths, we can always use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the third. So I'll start by writing my Pythagorean theorem. The side that's across from 90, or the hypotenuse, is 13. So 13 is the number I'm going to put in for C. And then x and 12, it doesn't matter which is a or which is b, I tend to put the variable first. So now I square the numbers, starting to solve for x. To get rid of the squared on x, I square root both sides of this equation, and I can find that my third side is 5. Let's do another one. Again, I have two sides where I know how long they are, and I'm looking to figure out how long the third side is. So I can use Pythagorean theorem. Um, X happens to represent my hypotenuse. So when I use my formula, X is going to be C. So I'll plug 4 and 3 in for A and B. doesn't matter which is which. Uh, I remember earlier in the year, a month or so ago, we uh, did them in numerical order, and you can always do that. We'll simplify the left side, and then we're going to take the square root of both sides to get x to be 5. So go ahead and pause here and find the missing side length. So here, 14.7 uh, is going to represent my hypotenuse, the side across from 90. So that's going to be my value for C when I plug in. Again, I, it, if the variable for me is not C, I like to put it first. I like to make it A. It's kind of the way we're used to seeing equations look. I'll square the 11.9 and the 14.7. Now I'll start solving square root both sides to get that x is close to 8.63. You might have said 8.6 and that's totally fine too. So one of the other ways that we can find a missing side length in a right triangle is if we know one of the side's lengths. So in this example I know that this side is 6 long. And then if we also know one of the angle measures, so here we know that this angle is 72. Now I can use sine, cosine, or tangent. So I'm going to label my three sides as opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent. You'll notice that my H and my A, I put a little box around them. That's because I have a value for each of those lengths. My adjacent side is 6. And my hypotenuse is x, which is what I'm looking for. So since I know something about a and h, I'm going to use the cosine relationship. So the cosine of my angle, which is 72, is equal to the, op or the adjacent side, 6, over the hypotenuse, x. Now I can multiply both sides by x to get this, x times cosine 72 equals 6. As cosine 72 represents one number, it's a decimal. We're going to move it uh, before we plug it into the calculator so that we don't have to round. 
So I can divide both sides by that whole cosine of 72, and it'll cancel right there. So I'm going to get that my x is equal to 6 divided by cosine of 72. Now in my calculator, I can actually do 6 divided by, press the cosine function, plug in 72, and find that x is 19.4. So that could get a little tricky for you at home if you don't have a graphing calculator. So if you're struggling getting to the final answer, but you get to this part, that's okay. Um, you can use the calculator when you get to class, or we can do it together for sure. So I got a similar thing here. I know two side lengths. One is 14 and one is x. I really know one side length, but I have another one labeled as x. And I know an angle in my triangle. So I'll label the sides as they relate to this angle, 51. There's my opposite. There's my adjacent. There's my hypotenuse. My opposite is 14, and my hypotenuse is the one I'm looking for. Opposite and hypotenuse relate to sine, so I'm going to use the sine function here. So the sine of my angle, 51, is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by x. Divide both sides now by the sine of 51. And I get that my missing side is equal to 14 divided by sine 51. I can plug that right side into my calculator to get the side to be approximately 18.01. So go ahead and pause here, try this guy. If you can't get the final answer because you don't have a graphing calculator, get as far as you can. So here I'm going to label my sides as they relate to 24. So I have my opposite, my adjacent, and my hypotenuse. My opposite side is x, my adjacent side is 12, so that uh, tells me to use the tangent. multiply both sides by 12 and now I can just do 12 times tangent of 24 to get x to be close to 5.34 so I have two for you to try if for some reason you can't do the second one fully because you don't have a graphing calculator and you're kind of struggling doing it on your phone or on a scientific calculator that's fine. Get as far as you can and just type what you got into the Google form. Um, and I'll answer any questions you have in class.